looks funny. Look what I wore today, Ashley. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are trained to this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> How did we know to match? Great minds, honey. Great minds. God, you look good. Your so skin looks good. You my do. team, my team asked me if I've even been outside. You look a little translucent. Well, it's gonna keep me young. I'm really <laughs> 73. Uh, oh. Uh, what we're discovering this week, uh, Karen, and I wish I would have had you on a couple weeks ago, but um, with Bold Pivot and all the new Zooms that are going on, our number of people has gone down, but it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a good group of people. I like to call that intimate. Intimate. That's perfect for us. I see my own leader, uh, Kristen Jungles, is on here. She is a raving fan of Ashley Lund, so it's awesome, awesome to see. So crazy, so crazy. Okay. How are you, dear? I'm terrific. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Ha <laughs> uh, Because it's intimate, and that this uh, it's this is hot. This is coming off. Um, let's just have a talk about how, as leaders, we're coping. I mean, like on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. Th this oh. is a place that, like, we can just be us. Um, so everybody. 21 people right now. <clears throat> Let's give them a little context to, to who you are. Um, I'm Ashley's number one fan. I work as her personal PR representative uh, for about the past eight years. It's a difficult job. Uh, I'm basically her cleanup person for any time she missteps or is inappropriate, which is often. Um, I'm also her sidekick and I'm happy to participate. That's the other side of me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Kristen, I'm not, not right too right. much actually. Yeah. <laughs> No, I just got done doing Can You Connect Live, so let me take this thing down. Okay. Did that say Honey Badger? Yeah, it did. No, no, it said, uh, I don't know what it said. Um, my name is Karen Paul. I am a team leader, OP, GM uh, in Western Chicago suburbs. Uh, I've been with KW 17 years. I left, I got a little crazy, and I went to Coldwell Banker for a minute. Uh, it, it we, we, we try not to hold that against you. No, no, no. Uh, but you know what's funny is we just had an agent go to Cobble Banker last year, got bought. I uh, guess who just came back today. During a pandemic, she said, my heart, my soul, everything. I never threw away my signs. I need my people. And, and to me, like, I'll cry. Like, this is where I cry. Um, that once, it's, once KW is in your heart, it never leaves. If, if, if you choose, if you plug in. And, and so that's, uh, I love it. I believe in her. I love in her. She's had a tough time and she's coming out clean and ready to go. So it was interesting uh, yesterday in our office meeting call, um, one of our lenders from Movement Mortgage said that she was so impressed because of course she has clients at other brokerages that are not taking care of their people and it hurts her heart to see it, but how rejuvenating it is to be in our environment where we are taking care of our people. I have lenders on, Kristen's a hundred percent aware of this. I have lenders on every day. Yeah. And we have, we have guests on every day. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. So obviously you've got big responsibilities, lots of market centers you've got your hands in. Um, I love to see the prominence that you're growing into actually nationwide for KW. You're one of those leaders that is filling the void um, that, that I have felt. And it's just so awesome to, to watch. More awesome that you're a friend. Um, but so how are... And I know, because we've had some private conversations, this hasn't all been easy. Uh -uh. Um, and yet, every time you're on camera, you pull it together. So how, yeah. how are you doing that? How are you maintaining your energy? Um, a couple different ways. One, um, this has been the hardest leadership journey I've ever been on. And it's, and it's been tough. Like, I'll get teary. It's been tough. Yeah. Um, I've grown more as a leader during this time than I probably ever have. And I'm, I'm also leading better than I ever have. So uh, it's, it's if we're ready to embrace it, understand we're never going back. And it's been tough, Ashley, you and I talk. Um, I, am, I am a high energy person. This is me all the time. Like it's exhausting to be around me for more than an hour, I'm quite sure. And it's what, it's what moves us forward because people are attracted to, they need energy and they need it. I'm in a very fortunate and unfortunate situation that I basically live alone. My husband lives out of town. So he just well, started. So, so you're in Naperville, Chicago. Give yeah. us the, the bigger 
Yeah, Joel, my husband, I'm 30 miles uh, southwest of Chicago, born and raised here, moved away for 25 years. I was an agent. I was rookie of the year. Um, I was a, a coach. I was an ATL. I was a team. You know, I've done almost every role. ALC member. I have probably have done every role. They won't let me be the MCA, though. No, that's not sure. MCA. No. no, that's for sure. Um, and um, and my husband worked in oil and gas. Uh, we were really broke uh, 10 years ago when I came back to KW. And um, I... And he really supported me. And so by my hard work, and, uh, and I'll cry about this too, is that my husband takes care of everybody, his father, his sisters, he has three daughters, we have, we have grandkids, I can't believe it. Um, and, and now I gave him that gift of last year, he was able to quit his job that he'd been supporting his ex-wife and family. And he now started his own company in Oklahoma because uh, he worked in oil and gas, so he'd already established a life there. So he's now in Oklahoma. Uh, as an entrepreneur, and I am the sole breadwinner in my family. Yeah. Yeah. But what um, a what a what a gift! I make him call me Sugar Mama just like three days a week. Um, that's necessary. So <laughs> it, it's helpful. It's helpful for my ego. Uh, and and uh, yet here you are quarantined alone, and you are not a you're not a solitude loving person in general. Well, you be, I'm actually a little bit of an introvert extrovert. Alone time is very important to me. So, oh, look, there's my husband calling now. Haven't even talked to him today. But what I've learned from this is that I, I work twice as much as most people should because I'm alone. And this pandemic was wearing me down. So the first, we pivot, I think we were one of the innovators in the country, um, our market centers. We pivoted, we put a website up, e2psuccess.com. Uh, we had our Zooms. I mean, the second week of March, we were rolling in play. I made an entire website around it. Like I created, I'm insane. And I am insane. And, um, and so I went hard and my husband came up here for about a week while he could. And he looked at me and he said, babe, this is not sustainable. You're going to crack. And I did. And I did, I got physically sick. I got diverticulitis, which is, yeah. if anyone's ever experienced it, not to talk about intestines, but it's horrible. Judy. Hi, Judy. Um, honored that she's on here. And uh, it, she's been awesome. She's been on here almost every single one. Bless her. Um, and, and I got sick physically and, and emotionally and I had to check out. And so my, I, I deal with stress and I get physically ill and I did everything to avoid being in the hospital. And yeah. so it's been hard. Like and then I can't, and my husband, my drive is 11 hours away. So I drove down there, spent 10 days down there. And then I got a speeding ticket on the way back. So I hate Missouri, no offense to anybody. Um, and so- What I love it, about that is we were on the phone. Oh my God, we literally were on the phone. I go, Ash, hold on, hold on. I think I'm getting pulled over right now. And I really was. And I was maybe going 90 and a 70. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, well, you know, minor difference. Yeah, just, yeah, prison. And so, so it's been roller coaster. Um, I've been very vulnerable. Uh, what's been different for me is I'm not defensive. This has really um, calmed me down just to take it because our agents are leaders in their families, in their communities. Realtors are the no, I'm a third generation realtor. Realtors are the pillar of a community for knowledge. So we lead this. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are the nucleus of a community thriving. And so I realized my agents, I felt beat up because my agents were getting beat up. Yep. And all kind of just flows down, right? Yeah, it, 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 it did. And Kristen, if I can, I mean, Kristen and I have a very, you know, evolved relationship too. She pushed me hard. And now, but because of this pandemic, I've had the time to have conversations that I would have never been able to have. Yeah. And this pandemic has made our relationship better. So that's what I'm taking from it. That's interesting too, because that's a choice, right? I, I, obviously, anytime we have crisis, who we currently are, where the level of our character is exposed for sure, but it also provides us an opportunity to grow it or not. Well, for her, it's, it's um, Kristen's an ALC member. She's a, a, been with us three years and um, raving fan of Ashley, more so than me. Um, she she challenged me on some stuff and it's not just what I learned. It's also what she learned. So you could share, I mean, 
do you want to share a, like a minute? Can she share on here? Do you like care? Of course. I mean, you're so casual, like, but Kristen, like, you know exactly what I'm talking about, all of this. About raising the bar? Um, yeah, I mean, talk about the first time you did it this time. <laughs> I've done it a few times in the last week, but here's the thing is that, first of all, I applaud you that you are open to having that dialogue with anyone at our office, right? Like you, people think that um, Prawl is unapproachable when actually the sooner you get that information into Prawl's hands, she is going to act on it and improve whatever the situation happens to be, right? So I think what I've learned from you over the last couple of weeks is that, is how incredibly important communication is and that dialogue with people and making sure that you not only vent on what your frustrations might be or your solutions might be, but also that you are receptive to hearing what their input is and where they're coming from on things. Because, I mean, you guys all know right now, it is, it's a difficult time for everyone, right? Everyone we're picking up the phone and getting into conversation with is having a struggle of their own that we're not aware of. And for Prawl, because we have a thousand agents, she gets it from all sides. <laughs> so I just simply offered up ways that we can improve that communication. So the first one was your morning power-ups need to be better. <laughs> well, I did actually tell her that Ashley hosts these really dynamic oh, yeah. power-ups that nobody wants to miss. Like you always tune into Ashley's call because you don't want to miss the content because the people are engaging, their stories are amazing. And I'm like, and we don't have that in our market center power. I'm sorry, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But what happened? So, well, now it, we're killing it on our power up. We, every single time we're highlighting an agent that's having success. Every time we're bringing people from around the world to come in and speak to our agents, every single call, people are like, damn, that was, a, that was the best call we had. And we're doing it again and again and again. Awesome. So, so here's what I've learned. I've learned that failing is okay. Being it's failed, inevitable, by the way. If you're doing yeah, anything, if you're moving yeah. forward, you're going to fail at some point. Yeah, being vulnerable is necessary. Being, uh, taking time to self-reflect is vital. And making a decision to how you're going to respond is everything. And so what I, I am sharing... Wait, sure pause there for a second. Making a decision on how you're going to respond means you're not reacting in the moment, right? Which is probably why your defensiveness has gone down because you're controlling that reaction initially. Now you're deciding how to respond. That's huge. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, I had an agent, it was like the day after Kristen, uh, you know, she told me what a terrible leader I was. No, I'm just kidding. That's not at all. <laughs> But what I've learned from this, the day after is, is this, this agent called me and just unloaded. I'm like, well, he is feeling some kind of stress at home. So one thing I knew is I had to meet him at his level and two, I was going to push back. And then I, and then I had the time to push back and I had to get on another call because I wish I could tell you I'm joking. And I told Kristen this last night, I've gotten a lawsuit every single day this week for a different office. Oh. And this is, yeah. And, it, and it's the most like, what do you drink? What can I send you? Um, I'm actually just not, well, I think I've lost weight because I'm not drinking. I mean, I just, you know, I told you, like, I'm not really drinking. I mean, I might later today. I might. <laughs> so this is, this is a Bloody Mary. No, I'm just kidding. It's iced coffee because I need more caffeine. Okay. But I, I, um, I realized if I wasn't on Zoom or if I wasn't at home and I wasn't self-quarantined, I would have never been able to take how they felt for an hour, Right. And I cried, but I had to get on a phone with an attorney like for 30 minutes. And then I called him back and then I pushed back. Where's your ownership on this? Who asked you to do that? And that was a, a it wasn't me just allowing them to vent on me. It was me pushing back on them. And then they learned something. So Kristen has learned huge. I can't come from judgment. I didn't know you didn't know. I didn't understand that's what the other side was. And so what this has allowed me to do is nurture the relationships with the people that are important to me and be in business with those who are important to me. Yeah. And I cried. I mean, I cried to Pete, my partner the other day, Gary Keller, when I was interviewed last week, he said, how are you feeling? I said, vulnerable, exposed, yeah. right? Recession is exposure. And I had an MCA tell me yesterday 
that they did a study in space with astronauts. And I have to find the study because I'm a very research-based person, even though I'm a terrible academic, but I love knowledge. That right now is when astronauts tend to crack. Time-wise, this many crack days in space. Weeks. Yep, is when emotionally, physically, like everything starts to break down. And Illinois, I don't know what your reopening plan is, but they're not going to let, our governor will not let restaurants open until June 25th right now. And that's at a graduated scale. I don't think we even have a date yet. Our, okay. our governor's being very conservative. Which I would rather pay now than pay again later. I mean, for me, that's my personal opinion. Like, let's just do this and move on. Um, and it's not my job to ever criticize how someone feels. So I, I stopped by an MCA's house yesterday and she's very, very timid, Maria Murphy, Kristen very timid about COVID. And I said, I just want to see your face. I'll meet you in the parking lot and we'll just go for a walk and we'll stay 10 feet away from each other. We'll walk on either side of the lane and let's just talk. Because if we don't respect how people are feeling, they'll never feel safe with us. Right. And everyone has a very strong opinion around it. So, so what have I learned? I've learned that I'm human. I'm infallible, which I've always known. I've always been like a vulnerable, like I'm very transparent like this is a mess i mean it looks clean right now but you don't have no idea what's happening how's your like, laundry should, doing um well okay here's what's crazy i am ocd like i do a load of laundry every morning i'm obsessed but i have been so exhausted by my mental energy being drained every day that i literally have piles of laundry and i showed it on the lady leaders page i was like this is real like this is real life like this looks good but it's it's a shit show here every day and my family room's a mess because I have to do these Zooms every day, but I'm doing Zooms 14 to 15 hours a day and then working, right? Because I can't respond to email while I'm on this. Yeah. So, so the coach in me goes, you can't sustain that, dear. I know. So stop it. It's okay to say no. It is. However, we are more connected now as a leader as a community right now with our agents and we've ever had been and it's not about me like we're empowering all other leaders and i am digging in my business hard yeah. i'm investigating every role the return on investment what they're performing are they a game or b team talent i was like b team in volleyball in high school um just i am digging in i know how much everybody made i, I mean i am in it so hard because i know how important it's gonna to be to the end. Because I, I could have quit being a team leader. This is my 11th year because I got the crap kicked out of me, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally. Um, or, or I can be excited. And I'm I can, so when you just excited. said that, I, I can remember in 2008, waking up every day wanting to quit being a team leader because it was just so much and, and too much. Um, and somehow you find the resolve to get through it. And I, I do remember being on uh, New Year's Eve going, I survived that. Everything past this is going to be easy. Well, then we get COVID. <laughs> and, it's... And, and there will be something else. Yep. Yeah. And you don't know if you can make it until you're making it. Right? No, and trust me, I thought about it. I'm like, how many market centers am I investor in? If I could cash out of every, I mean, I trust me, I've thought about it. Yep. Or I'm just not going to do this today. But that's not my character. Yeah. Like, I can't do that. I can't. Yeah. Mm -mm. So the important question then is how, how are you refilling those energy stores? Because 15, 16, 17 hours a day, again, is not sustainable. You will get sick again. Um, so where's self-care coming in? And if it's not, we're going to be talking more often. I know. I know. Um, well, since I can't get massages, which was a huge part of me, um, me too. It, it, it's the one thing I missed. It was my once a week self care thing. My nails. Did you see the video? I'm gonna send you a video on um, the new yeah. massage. Um, massage is important to me. Remember, I don't get touched because my husband's not here, right? I haven't seen him in three weeks. Um, it's connecting with my friends. I, my friends from college and high school. I've, I long term friendships are very important to me. That is my one interview question uh, with everybody: is how long have you had your longest friend? It's a great question. Yeah, because what would it tell me at 47, almost 47 years old? Yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> tells you a lot of things. Right. If I said I'm 47 and I said, oh, seven years. Yeah. Well, what happened prior to that? Who were you then? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So it's connecting. I don't want to FaceTime with my friends at night and zoom. I don't. Yeah. Um, I did a puzzle for four and a half hours the other night. Right. I just had to turn my brain off. I go for a walk. I want to go play tennis. You painted something too. Didn't you paint a room? A wall overnight. I started at 1130 at night. Mm -hmm. I like painting though. You know why? Immediate results. Well, and if your body is doing something, this slows down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I went to play tennis yesterday, but a lot of the courts were locked and then my partner had to go and we're doing a running club. Um, I haven't done it this week yet, but we're, I'm supposed to be doing a that, running so club. So you're really there doing a running club. Whoever they are. Kristen. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, just seeing people, I went to the office yesterday and just being in the office again was nice. Yeah. I realized what I realized through this is I'm not grounded. And for some reason I told myself a story that quarantine. What do you mean that, you're not grounded? Like I don't have to stay in my house. Oh, and oh, I, grounded. And like, thought, like your parents grounded you. Yeah. Like yeah. for four weeks, I've been like not leaving my house, obviously, because I'm so tan. You can tell. Well, you're, it's also been a little chilly there, hasn't it? Yeah, it's nice out today, though. Um, it's going to snow this weekend. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's going to be, uh, it was 103 here yesterday. Yeah. It's going to be somewhere similar today. You know, Ashley, I, I, love, I love Southern California. I love San Diego. I could never live there because my clothes are a polyester blend. <laughs> and they don't breathe. And so I would it have would not to be good. It would be very stinky. An entirely new wardrobe. Um, so that's why I think I'm a good fit for the Midwest because I can wear Polly and Esther, my mom's two favorite sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so let's shift the gear. Um, obviously we're in it now. We don't know when we're getting out of it. Uh, what are you, what are you preparing for? Um, one of my favorite terms from this week for re-entry. What is your market center going to look like? What, what are you? Well, I had a, I had a half million dollar remodel on the books in Naperville, my biggest office uh, that was about to, go under construction. So that's not happening. Um, and, and we are going to update it. It needs it. It's old, it's ugly and it's old and ugly, but it's God, the heart and the energy is so good there from everybody that works there. So we have to transmit our training room is going to be totally different because Pete, my partner said, I love that you are giving it your all, but like, and I was like, yeah, we get back in the office. I got to get this remodel going. And he's like, wait a second. He said, we're never going to have a training in the training room again this year this year yeah and i go wait wh what yeah and he's like yeah and i go oh so right then i'm like oh we need a podcast studio for people to use we need a movie studio like a video movie room for people to use and so we're going to pivot by providing that for our agents i'd love that yeah yeah because if we can't have in-house trainings because don't you feel like ashley is a leader you're way more effective right now using zoom in a I lot of do, ways. but I, I feel like we're all, <clears throat> we are missing something in that oh. physical connectivity. Um, you know, I've, I've done, I haven't done trainings as much as much more casual things like this. Been a guest on a ton of Zooms too. And um, there's, when you can't get the immediate interaction with the audience, I think the learning experience for them is less. So I may feel better. I may feel like I'm more accessible. You know, people can see me, but how do I really gauge if they're getting what I want them to get. It's really yeah. hard on with this. Yeah. I, and I think it is our systems. It's, it's changing our own staff. It's meeting a need there. It's what do the agents want? And my ALC is pivotal during this time, right? We have a meeting next week. I shared, I have a, I love spreadsheets. I will make a spreadsheet. You're such a geek. Oh my God. If you guys saw the number, I mean, I'm like, oh, we can make a spreadsheet for that. They're like, oh God, I hate you. Well, maybe because it's like the only class I did really well in at Ohio State was CIS. Well, that, but it, numbers and spreadsheets give you control and you like that. I just like that they tell a story. I can tell a story out of numbers for anything. Maybe that's it as I can like spin it. Um, and, and so now I've made myself very exposed. My ALC has our flash report, which we have a super flash. It's like the most robust thing you've ever seen. And they're digging in. And, and I got a call from Kristen last night. She said, um, someone was really worried about their, their pro we're doing match 10, give 10, get 10, like matching in um, campaigns okay. for command. Okay. We're using our tech fund money yeah. uh, that we have because we're not buying equipment or anything right now. And, um, and they said, well, is that, how is that going to mess with profit share? So first of all, as a leader, do you know why makes I was you, most proud? Makes you proud. Why, why, but proud. people don't know that. Why would I be so proud? 
about that question? Uh, because they understand the finances enough to know every dollar in and out counts towards profiture. They were thinking. Yeah. They were in it. And I was like, first of all, I loved the question because they were connecting the dots. So I was like, job well done. Then I love the question because they wanted to know it because it's their job to protect the profit share. Yep. Okay. So then I thought that was amazing. And then once Kristen got the answer to bring back the message to her constituents, um, she was like, cool. Cause I didn't realize I didn't know either. I'm like, great, just ask. And so we've made ourselves so much more transparent. So they know every, they have every metric, every data um, about everything in our organization and there's no hiding behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not that we ever, we were never hiding behind it. We just didn't communicate enough. Communication has been a- Well, okay, so some things have sped up, right? We're working longer days, but some things have slowed down, like you said. And so we can over communicate because we have kind of the pause between breaths, as opposed to working in an office where it's just the constant barrage of stuff. So that's a, it's a good side effect. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Being a team leader of a, of a large market center is you don't get a break when you're inside the market center because it's always something that has to get done. And then- It's interesting. Kind of, I, I don't think he's a, Oh, go ahead, honey. I'm oh, sorry. I just feel, Kristen, I just figured it out. That's why people think I'm unaccessible because I'm always in a meeting when I'm in the market center. You're, or moving, right? In between. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things when I was a team leader is, hey, uh, I had a lot of meetings in the bathroom because that's the only place you could get me. Yeah, Kristen. here, can you sign these checks under the door? Yeah, awesome. Wait, actually, Kristen, tell her what we did. So we did a video once because I'm in, I'm, we're in the bathroom, Prowl's in the bathroom, and an agent comes in and starts asking her stuff in the bathroom. I'm like, do you ever get a break? So we, we did a video in the bathroom, like a spoof video on asking Prowl questions and, and so that everybody could see, like, you guys, she doesn't have to be available all the time. <laughs> I, I want like, that video. I have it, and, I, and my response, like, when they ask me, I go, can I just pee first? <laughs> like, it's like... Yeah. And, and I think Kristen, like, and I love fun and I love humor and I love fun. I was like, oh my God, this is a great video. So like, I'm trying to watch in the bathroom and she's like, no, and I have these ideas. And it was, I mean, it's so fun. So I want to see it. So okay. my team leader, Steven, um, texted me last night and he said, hey, when, once we're actually not quarantined anymore, can I take a week vacation? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Because we're going to need it. It's the most bizarre thing. Yeah. And I also, just because I see him up there, um, Robert, you did an amazing job yesterday with our team meeting. Um, they taught how to do a virtual open house. And I, I know, because uh, we've known each other for a long time, that wasn't the easiest thing for you to put together. Uh, and yet you had the time and ability to go through command and see everything and deliver it in a way that was awesome. Well, thank um, you. I really um, had fun putting it together. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm a little bit more techie than you realize. I just hide it. You know why? Because if you, if everybody knows, you're going to get inundated with questions all day long. So I used to run tech at my former business, so I play dumb. You should. Well, he's our broker, so he does that well. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I understand. I could, that's a job I could never do either. I'd be in prison. Um, did you guys see what's out on the command app today? The greatest piece ever. If you guys have to compete with technology. What is it? Okay, open your app if you have it and pick up a home. By fantastic the way, update, by the way. Pardon me? It's a fantastic oh. update, by the way. By the way, if you have a droid, Ashley, you don't get it yet. So why don't you just look at my iPhone? Oh my God, I'm so mm. many people. This is why I'm mean. I'm okay. saving them up. When I see you next time, mm -mm -mm. bring it, girl. Okay, so let's say I look at this house. 2.2, this is probably Kristen's house. She's loaded. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Look at what it says now. I can't. Schedule video tour. Schedule video tour. You push on it, it's gonna ask you, do you want Zoom, Facebook, do you want a video or virtual walkthrough? Awesome, awesome. I'm really obsessed. Cool. So when I talk to t people about when we were, we weren't joking when I said, get your app into as many consumers hands as possible, yeah. because if I click, obviously you should all have your own app logged in under you. If I click schedule a tour, guess who is going to get that lead? Yep. Yep. 
Awesome. All right. So let's go back. So what do you, obviously through the end of the year, uh, you're, you're not planning on having in the office trainings. What else is changing? What do you see for next year? Um, I think the way we use space, I think small one person offices or cubes or workstations that are enclosed are going to be vital for people. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, um, I don't know. And I think that's the thing of being open yeah. to like the possibilities that I, what's been, what I've enjoyed about this pandemic, if I can say that in a not messed up way is what Kristen referenced earlier, we're all going through it. And so not having an answer is perfectly acceptable. Yep. The other thing I'll add on there, and we've heard that on this, I've heard this on numerous Zooms that we've had. If you're stuck in fear, if you're stuck in that uncertainty, or you're, you're just pessimistic, you have less ability to be innovative when things are shifting. So whatever you have to do to get yourself out of that, oh my God, the sky is falling, is so necessary. Because we're all going to have to continue to pivot, right? And two-step our way all the way through this. I mean, stop watching the news five hours a day. Yeah. I don't watch the news. I, I listen to it on my Alexa for 10 minutes in the morning and that's it for me um, because I can only control what I can control. And we've had agents that have been paralyzed in fear and they haven't left their house. Well, the business is passing them by and they won't get it back. And that's hard because that's, it's where they are in their world and their mind um, has, been, has been tough to watch. Giving grace uh, has been huge, but also digging in. I mean, the exposure yeah. of all of us. Like, Asha, you and I had a very serious conversation when this first hit, right, about stuff. And, oh, my gosh, what is going to happen? And, and I'm excited about what could happen because there are possibilities that we never knew existed. Yeah. We would not have this conversation six weeks ago. Like, so everyone who's on here, pat yourself on the back because you, you've made it, right? You've made it. And I'm sad. I'm sad for the agents that don't have the support. And I'm sad for the people that don't engage. And I'm sad that they don't plug in. Because I always say when an agent says, I took a listing, but it's never going to sell. I go, you're right. <laughs> right? Oh, the world is ending. You're right. Yep. Oh, there, no one. Kristen, how many times do we hear? Well, no one's buying or selling houses. You're right. We're, we but we're are, only going to get what we're looking for. Yeah. And so just teaching when, and, and if that's their attitude, great, move on. Like yeah. some will, some will, won't. So what next? Next. That's it. And the market's hot here. Multiple offers are happy. I mean, oh, same much, here. Uh, the, uh, you probably are like us and have very, very little inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's quality over quantity. And this is the time to elevate our professionalism as a realtor. Yeah. Imagine that's what just going tell. to happen, right? Well, we know to, right? that the, the people who didn't treat this as a profession are not at day 55 or whatever. They're not even here now. <laughs> so by the no. end of the year, I, I really think we'll see our rosters cut in half across, across the industry. We will. However, there's also 32 million people that just got unemployment that are a massive talent pool. Absolutely. And are never going to leave their fate again into an employer. So Absolutely. pharmaceutical reps, IT reps, I mean, these people that are skilled business people, business owners, think about, I mean, God, it's awful, all the businesses that are going to go under, but it's tragic and it's, it's already sad to see. We already feel that sadness. Um, but those people are going to put their fate in another. And, and I'm grateful for the governments. Like California and Illinois run pretty succinctly in, in what's yeah. been happening that we are essential. Yeah. And how fortunate we are. How fortunate we are to have that. Yeah. And Tommy Choi actually helped us out. I appreciated that because we weren't essential at the beginning. And I reached out to him and said, Hey, what did you do? Um, you know, with car, cause yours is car also. <laughs> oh. is. Um, and I took all his information and forwarded it to our region and they were talking to CAR. It was great. Yeah. And I mean, Pennsylvania Realtor Association is suing the governor. Really? Yes. Wow. And, and I had a business owner ask me, why is real estate essential? And I was like, Hello? what do you mean? We keep a community going. It's are you, like, and we have transfer fees, like Naperville is ridiculously, they collect, 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 but we have really good services. So you get what you pay for and great schools. Um, but we, we keep everything moving forward. Realtors, people yeah. open new bank accounts. They go to the hardware store. I mean, they get. It's cleaning. definitely a driver of the economy. 
for it's sure. one of means for a local economy. So, yeah. so why are we essential? Because everything would stop if we weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for you personally, Oh God, why I like deflecting so much better. I know. And we just are going to come right back to it. No, because Kristen's going to hold me really accountable. And I don't, can you, can you remove her from the group? <laughs> <laughs> so for you personally, let's say we are here another two, three, four five weeks. What do you want to choose to grow in? Um, a good friend of mine, Jody Box, says, let's not waste this pandemic. We've got this pause, right? So what, what do you want to take out of this once in a lifetime experience to get better? How I use my time. Time. Yeah. Time's a finite thing. Um, this has helped me understand that I can perhaps go work in Oklahoma remotely. Right? Which was your husband. Mountain. And see my, well, my, the, the challenge in my situation <laughs> is that my husband's work is two and a half hours away from his home. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so like, it's messy, but we're, we're you know, I have a podcast called The Messy Empire. Uh, please download it. And, um, and I, I, we're trying to figure it out. Um, you know, we, I have a lot of moving pieces. I have a mother with dementia that got kicked out of her retirement home during this pandemic and we had to emergency flyer to Portland and now they want us to come move her stuff out, but we can have to, we have to box her, pack her and move her in one day. I mean, like it's ridiculous. And, and I've had two pets pass away and we collect dogs and horses. Uh, pet rescue is one of my passions and I've had, and that I was sick. I mean, I, everyone has life. Right. And so it's been a lot. Well, uh, actually, I think a lot, I, thank you for sharing that because I think a lot of people forget with a figurehead, that yeah, all that shit goes on too, right? Oh. It's not, you're not just showing up 14 hours a day on Zooms and being the inspiring person. You're dealing with all the same stuff. Yeah, yeah, we all are. Um, and so for me, it's Jody uh, Sholene is a newer, she's been with us just a couple years. Is she in your tree? No. Whose tree is she in? No. Um, Jody Sholene um, said, and I have never forgotten this. If it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. That's great. And I was like, that's it. That's all it is. I am too old to spend time or doing to do things with people I don't want to or activities I don't want to. Yeah. I'm too old. Yeah. And we have this pause to uh, get more clarity on what is actually important, mm -hmm. right? Because when we are in that rapid responding to everything, reacting to everything mode, we can accidentally say yes often. Yeah. And, um, and getting out of the way for my people to step up or step out. Say more about that. Um, I'm, I am very, um, determined to, I got comfortable. Yeah. Right. We had massive success, ridiculous growth. And I was doing all these other projects of opening another office and whatever. And I, and I thought that the people I had in place were doing it. I have very high standards. Uh, and I thought that was happening and I didn't inspect what I expected. And I came back to a mess yeah. and I didn't even know it was happening. And then I have to report to my OP in this case where I'm a team leader and I'm like, Hey, listen, it's a mess and, and I got to clean it up. Yeah. And so that is part of why I'm working so hard right now is as I'm in cleanup mode, but that's, what's exciting about the other side. Well, and it's let, awesome. let me pause there for a second too, because I've had this conversation with some people on this Zoom right now. Often when, when your leaders, whether it's the OP position or team leader or MCA broker, we are moving and reacting, responding to so many things. We sometimes do stop inspecting. And I know for me, I have a, um, an expectation that my agents, especially my trusted agents, will tell me when things are amiss and they often don't. For whatever reason, they're afraid to come to you. They're afraid of the reaction. They're afraid, whatever. I'm looking Please, at you guys. We're in partnership together. Um, so you, you, you're the ears on the front lines. If I'm doing something that's screwing up the business, please tell me. Well, this is in marriage and like, obviously I can't live away from my husband and have trust or jealousy issues. Like it's not even a conversation. Right. Um, but in marriage and in life and with families and kids and, uh, people that I work with, uh, Jill Corville is a leadership coach and I love Jill. She's one of those brilliant friends I have, and I'm, I'm honored to call her my friend. And she said, don't let your people love you into failure. 
and do not love your people into failure. And I realized I loved them so much. I was not, I stopped pushing. Well, it's interesting. So that, that's one way to look at it. One of my mentors and friends, Diana, would say, you don't love them if you're not willing to be honest with them. Well, so then I said to Kristen, thank you for loving me enough. Yeah. And having the courage, by the way. Oh, she, yeah. I mean, because she, she cares so deeply for our office. And what is, well, you might know this because you two talk, but um, what she was calling to me as a problem Kristen, I'm looking at you. <laughs> now, what, 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 how did I, how did I 180 that conversation to you? And you were not expecting this conversation from that call. Well, yeah. now yeah. apparently I'm responsible for uncovering the solution. <laughs> Another leadership lesson, by the way. We want our agents to bring us the issues and then great, own a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because don't bring me a problem just to bring me a problem. Because I can't just be me that fixes it. We need everyone's buy-in, especially my ALC's buy-in. I mean, we raised our cap and put in a transaction fee in the same year. Yeah. Right? Imagine if I didn't have the ALC's buy-in, which the ALC finance chair did all the research to bring it to the table. Yeah. Like we did that back in uh, 2015. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, by the way, we're not lowering it either. Sorry, Kristen. Um, but no one's, I mean, that's not even an issue. So I also think this is the one thing that we are all doing with our businesses right now is to identify where there's opportunity for growth, right? And where do we see the holes within our own business? And so by bringing that to you, it wasn't really just a problem. It was just an opportunity for us to be better. Yeah. And then what was your response when I go, oh, I know. I'm like, you did? How long have you known? <laughs> yeah, we think that people are not in the know, so we need to stay in curiosity process. Yeah. Well, and the other, the other part of that, and this is good for all of our agents to hear because there's other OPs and team leaders on this call. Often we don't know. Often we are in the dark, right? Um, and yet sometimes we do know, but you don't know all the other things that are higher on that priority list. And She's you probably don't want to know. She said, you know, and I go, well, yeah, I've had a spreadsheet on it for a year. Of course, a spreadsheet. And she said, you did? You, so you know. I go, yeah, I know. So you know, like, you know. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, well, you always speak so highly and you're always so encouraging. I go, well, that's a leader in my organization. Yeah. Right? What am I going to say? Hi, this is Bob. And he's got a lot of gaps. And I'm really digging in behind the scenes to figure out what it is. But you all should listen to him. That's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Isn't all right. Fun, Ashley, it's so fun. It is, it, you know, it is fun at times. Um, and counterbalanced by the not fun on the other side. I'm so sorry about the daily lawsuits. That's really fun. Oh, I mean, I mean, okay. So yesterday when I got, our, when we got a fourth one, um, which is a lot of it's like just, we, it's so weird and nutty and it's not anything like no one needs to be worried about. Kristen can't tell anybody. I, about it because I don't want anyone to panic like oh what are they doing wrong but I love that like Pete and I have five market centers and the four that got the lawsuits were his Pete's OP <laughs> so I texted him that's actually I, perfect yeah I texted him in the controller last night I go it's not a coincidence that the only one that didn't get a suit is mine um and and uh, but I'm an investor in all the other ones and I, and I also said to him like I don't know if I would do anything with KWRI right now because you probably don't have a good name there like at least we can make fun of it so we called each other yesterday when the last one came in and we just start laughing like what do we get i mean what are we gonna do i i said last year i was waking up so many days going i can't handle anymore i can't handle anymore i can't hit and every day so the universe doesn't actually hear the apostrophe t all it hears is i can handle more i can handle more <laughs> change your affirmations <laughs> what is your affirmation that you use what's yours um i'll post I'll post, I just rewrote some this weekend. Uh, right now, a lot of mine are about me personally going through my grief and not, um, yeah, not deflecting uh, and not ignoring. Well, you know, that's true. And I think part of my health issues is that um, I don't think I've grieved several people and I landed it from family reunion and I was sick 
I've never been sicker, which I really think I had COVID. I'm not going to lie. I mean, my throat. I, was, there's several agents I know that have said the same thing who were there. Oh, my temperature shards. I mean, I, it was awful. I was sick for 10 days. I landed the plane and I didn't land the plane like that would be amazing. Um, but I landed and I got a call that one of my dearest friends passed away unexpectedly. And so I literally got in my car from the airport and went to his house where he, there he was. And, and I've actually cried more over his death because I, it was a daily relationship. It's one of my oldest uh, friends, boyfriends or partners. And, and, um, and I had, I literally was on my knees sobbing for him, but I realized it wasn't just Mike. It was, oh, it was the layers of everything. Oh my gosh. So I hired a second coach last year and, um, and she has helped me physically break, you know, emotionally break through a lot of the stories and things. And she, she has been very freeing. And the biggest lesson I've gotten this past year is um, I used to be really dressy all the time, like pearls, necklace, heels, whatever. And um, she, and I had back surgery. So I kind of changed things about wearing heels. Oh, and a bunion. So that's hot. Um, but she, she taught me that I have nothing left to prove. And that was the most freeing thing I've ever experienced to go through that metamorphosis of like, I don't have anything to prove. I get to just be me and I'm okay. Yeah. And doing the work I've done more. I've, it's the work. It is the work and it is work. You, you, <sighs> yeah, you need a plan around it. I just, I flashed back cause I was only at reunion a couple of days, but we were at the lady leaders uh, breakfast, I guess, four hour breakfast and Judy was there. And I will for, this is just comic relief for everybody. For the rest of my life, I'll remember the two hugs. Well, I had about a hundred hugs, but I'll remember two hugs from that day. I, know, I probably gave you uh, She's the best hugger in the world, by the way. And uh, I, you just are, hun. And that was the, the most fulfilling hug I've ever gotten. And then I walked about 10 steps away and you hugged me. And you in heels makes an awkward hug for me. I'm fine with it. <laughs> it was I'm 5'10". Yeah. I'm 5'10 without heels. Yeah. So Ashley's face. Yeah. It's, it's awkward. It's not. <laughs> Listen, I don't even know how to deal with men because I grew up with four sisters. And so most of my leaders are women. The people in my world are women. Like I, it's rare, but I, I am only understanding of women because I really, I've lived with my husband two out of 12 years <laughs> and I was married to a bad, bad man before and then engaged to a few in between there and, um, you engaged to a few? My goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it was nice. I like to feel wanted. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I, women are my tribe because of having four sisters, I think, really. So that lady leaders group. Yeah. Um, an awesome and people, are, and you know, it's funny that my, I've once, I grew up with a Southern mother. And if anybody knows what that does to you emotionally about, you're going to leave without your face on. Like if anyone has dealt with that, that's really fun. And that makes you, gives you a lot of confidence. But sure, you want to eat that? Nice. Yeah, she's, nice. she's so funny and she's smart and she raised our family. Uh, but that uh, people will say, are you okay? You posted that video with the laundry. Yeah. Are you okay? You all right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that's real. Yep. That, I, showed the, I showed my piles and piles of clean laundry in the corner. Like this looks... And, and my own world, my sister is an agent. She's a managing broker in one of my offices. And, and she's like, are you sure you want to put that out there? Because well, she's so worried about looking good. Well, and, and Peggy Elliott just put in here, right? Me sharing my grief has helped her. We have that responsibility. And I do think this pause has allowed us to really realize we are all the same. We are all interconnected and we are all the same. And if we keep playing that game of, of comparing our insides to other people's outsides, it's going to keep pulling us apart. So I love this. I, I've told a lot of our agents, I will go through the Zoom and look at everybody's house. You know, how are they really living? I, I, it's my Chris, and how many times have I said that? I was like, do you know why I like Zoom, you guys? Because I'm a I'm a daughter and a granddaughter of a realtor. <gasps> I look in everybody's houses. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's awesome. It's, it's, like, well, it's like taking walks at night. Like, why do I do that? <laughs> why? Because I want to see inside your house. Obviously, I'm a real creepy. So creepy. Mm -hmm. All right. So two last questions. Um, number one, how can we help you? You do help me every day knowing you're in my heart. Aww. And that I can reach out at any time. 
Ashley, Anytime. you're one of the most, I'm, I'm, you know, I met Ashley, I met Ashley in Austin or somewhere at a bar before an event and she was under 40 and it was a team leader. Like there were only like 10 of us there. Do you remember that? It I was, do. I don't even know yeah. what town it was in because we've been to a lot. And I was like, oh my God, I like her. She's funny. And you were so young and, um, and I, I've always, always loved, like from that moment, I'm like, that's my girl. Got it. Uh, but seriously, what we've got, you know, 32 people on here. What, how can we support Chicago, Naperville, Karen? I mean, we'll take million dollar cash buyer referrals. Okay. Like that's, that's amazing. No, just be you. Be, our community, and, and, and I said this to Gary when he interviewed me last week. I don't know if I said it on that one. I, I wrote an email. Okay. His assistant, I said it. Did I send that email to, to Mindy? Today, right? Yeah. Mindy, his assistant said, Hey, Gary has some questions. Like, these are the questions we're asking, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, do you mind? I'm like, no. And I like, let it rip. Okay. So I, 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 I'm just going to say this because a lot of our people know, but um, I believe you are one of the only people, and I would say I, I really haven't known anybody else, who is pretty darn blunt with Gary when we need to be. And well, I've never really had that, that opportunity. Well, we always have the opportunity, but you took oh, it, yeah. right? Right. Oh, that's true. And, and that, that's that, that that's a scary thing. Um, and yet so important because this is a company of agents by agents. And if we're saying come to us with the truth, we have the responsibility to go to our leader with the truth. And you did that. I and did. then he interviewed yeah. you, which is awesome. And because I don't have an ulterior motive. I don't want to go work at Keller Williams and National unless I'm the president. Um, I don't want to, I don't have these dreams of that Gary has to approve of me. You know, somebody might be texting Josh right now. Do not text Josh and say, Karen wants her job. Don't do that. No, no, he knows. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But I, I will say um, that I wrote that from my heart to Mindy. I thought Mindy was going to take it, disseminate it. And then like, but no, the next day she's like, Gary would like to have a private Zoom with you. And I was like, oh no, am I in trouble? Because I am a troublemaker. I am a, I am a troublemaker. And I did it and I actually have never, well, I, t I, wrote, a, I wrote a class with him uh, like a year and a half ago, which was the first time leadership had ever been engaged with Gary Keller yeah. to this extent. It's, it's like a whole new company. It's outstanding. And, and that's why I think so many people are coming back to KW that were leaders right now. Anyway, and I felt very safe with him. And he just went through that whole email. And I said, listen, I'm going to kick some people. I want to put my foot up people's butts about, let's go. You know, we got stuff to do. And I was very, very real. I didn't even like sign off, which is funny because I never say goodbye on the phone either. Yeah. So, I mean, but I, if, I if it was Gary, I would have written it. But I love that it just came from my heart. And I was just like, yep. and it worked. So then he, um, I forgot where I was going with that. But it worked. And then he interviewed you publicly. He did. He wants to know. Yeah. I think he realizes that he wasn't being told what's, re what's going on and where we could improve. And well, trust it's just, the th here's the funny thing. We're no different. <clears throat> I certainly have had as a leader, the experience of not inspecting what I expected you have, and he has. And if you're in, if you don't have the information coming at you, what, what are you going to do? Yeah. It, yeah. And I love that he's digging in. Yeah. Well, and in my, in my moments when I feel graceful towards him, <laughs> I've, I almost have a pity. I mean, I know how much stress we're feeling. Can you imagine well, what that man's shoulders are holding up right now? You know, Ashley, I'm really grateful you brought that up because you sent me an email. You were going. <laughs> <laughs> there was a different version that actually went out. Yeah. It's much nicer. And I was like, um, let's, let's discuss some of these points first, right? But that's why we have each other. Oh, I know what I was going to say. And Ashley, you will, you will, because you are, will always be a team leader, right? Because it's once it's in your blood, it will be in their blood. Absolutely. I said to him, I said, there is no network to support each other like a Keller Williams team leader network. It doesn't happen at the OP level and there's far less OPs. Yeah. And it doesn't happen at the PC level. And it doesn't happen at the MCA level like it happens on the team leader level. And imagine how much stronger we could be if we can teach community to the other market center leaders with each other. Yeah, because we need it as much as OPs. And for some reason, it, yeah, just. Oh my God, I tell Pete, like, how easy do you have it? I'm the one on the front line. Like, you have no idea, Pete, how easy you have it. You know, like joking, but he, he's been in it. 
And, um, and I think the team leader network is friendships for life that I could never replace with anybody else. Yeah. And so let's, let's keep that community going because it doesn't happen at Cobalt Banker. It doesn't happen at Reem. It doesn't happen anywhere else. And it is the team leaders that are the glue yeah. that keep all of this running because we do, com I communicate with at least five to 10 team leaders every day. Well, and there, and I would say this is true for every one of our leadership roles, including agents, nobody else gets what you go through except somebody who's doing no. the same thing you do. So brokers, OPs, productivity coaches, every, I would really encourage, take this time to develop your own inner circle of those people in the same role. Well, and not only that, you think about, think about um, churches, mega churches, and I talk about this a lot. They, they have a higher retention rate if they are in relationship with five to seven people in their church, yep. right? And, and one of my team leaders um, who has grown a lot through this, like I had to kick him in the butt a little bit, but he's showing up now. And uh, he didn't love that kind of conversation. And he, he said, how do I create community? And I was so proud of him for asking that question. Like that's where I celebrate a win, right? Yep. And I said, well, I would put Christina, the front desk person on that because that is her world. She would love to figure out the matrix of who's in community and just call and ask, who are the three, the people you talk to the most in your office and just start tracking it. Yeah. And I said, Chris, where you're in, I just lost a team, uh, a, a single agent um, basically to Compass, okay? And I said, well, who is his community in that office? It yeah. was me and my co-team leader. No That's wonder you got for a check. Yep. It's, it's really interesting. And again, in this pause time, I don't feel that we've ever had a more connected time in terms of our agents. It's awesome to see. Um, yeah, it, it's it, my question for myself is how do we continue that once we are all back? Because um, it's something pretty special is being built right now. I'm doing, and I'm committing to the Zooms every day. People, the comments and the feedback. I mean, we dance, you know, in the beginning. Ashley, you'll be on ours. We have dance party every day and at the end. And um, and I think part of what I've learned is that I love de being the office DJ. I think that's like one of the things <laughs> I've learned is I love being a DJ. Uh, only for one song at a time, though. So, but, so big pivot, and I, I really want to respect everybody's time on here. Oh, yeah. Here, last question, and I'll share with you what we're doing. What are you doing for Red Day? We are buying lunches. We have two agents that own restaurants. And so we're buying lunches and things from there and taking them to all the grocery store workers and uh, meat oh, and all the cool. employees. Yeah. Yeah. That's and really we, cool. We've raised like $3,000 just from our associates to pay for it. Uh, we haven't even asked for sponsors and it's been, it's been great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And our ALC, what you went, what well, our ALC went back and forth and really wanted to make something so anybody who wanted to could participate, but there's, there's a lot of people we have still that don't want to be out in the community, right? They're afraid. So yeah. everything's going to be virtual. And I believe Robert, it's a five hour talent show essentially with talent, not, not like juggling in a chicken costume. Sorry. It was a hot dog. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I still want to see that. Um, but actual singers and, and entertainers and comedians from our greater community. So it's kind of like a live aid. <laughs> oh, I love um, it. Yeah, and then uh, we'll donate all the money we raise from that to our local um, Gay and Lesbian Center. You know, oh, that's awesome. Because you know they're, they're really suffering as far as donations go right oh, now. And, and same with um, pet shelters. And you know what's interesting is my ALC, uh, the culture chairs were like, can we put a dollar in everybody's bill? I'm like, no, 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 no. I mean, I'll do a dollar. They wanted five. I'm like, no, no, no. I can't commit people to that. We don't understand their financial situation. No, I cannot commit to five. So they, they decided, great, we'll just do a spreadsheet and asked. And everybody gave 10, 25, 30. I mean, Kristen, it, was it not amazing? I was afraid to ask them for $5. But instead of putting it, leaving it, not me making a decision of what it's going to look like on their agent bill, giving them the option, the abundance that has come from it has been, it's mind blowing. So that's been awesome. really fun. That's awesome. One of the things we did, we cut our, um, last month, we cut all of the invoices for the agents in half. Yeah, we did. Um, and we had several agents uh, get back to either me or our MCA, Nancy, and say, you know what, we're good. We don't need to cut a, we'll just pay our full bill. You don't have to do that for us. Yeah. And um, as a, my entire professional life, those, that was the most touching thing I've experienced. Yeah, I, really I mean, cool. that paying an agent's office bill, things like that, like we haven't gotten a rent 
cut, but we cut our rent yeah. for our agents, but you know, in half. And yeah. we haven't asked for that yet because right now we're still making income. We're a little worried about June and July, right? Uh, because we don't know what it's going to look like. And um, I'm sure you have a spreadsheet. Obviously, I have a, I'll send it to you. We have a cash on hand spreadsheet. Of course, like, I can, yeah, of course I, of course I do. <laughs> All right, honey. Right. Enjoy the rest of your 15 calls no. today. And I'm getting you, well, actually, I'm going to see Chris and Jungles uh, in an hour. In person? Like in physical person? No, we oh. have, um, so talk about the fortunes and the follow-up. Um, it's, uh, how long have you been with us, Kristen? Um, almost three years. Okay, and you gave me this person, well, you set up the, don't just give a name, by the way, you've got to connect the appointment. And then um, how long ago did you give that, make that connect? Wow, it's like about, probably about a year and a half ago, and she owns a brokerage west of us. It would actually be almost two years ago because she went two to Mega Camp. Remember that? Oh yeah, Mega Camp. Yeah. So we are doing a Zoom together, awesome. and I'm going to show her command. Awesome. Cool. Go get them. We're going to get them. Awesome. Okay. All right. Talk That's to you me. soon. Like Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic okay. Thursday. Well, I appreciate what you did for us this week too. You're amazing. Anytime. See you soon. Bye.